All right. Hello, everybody. This is Carl White broadcasting from the secret headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals slash Freedom Club here in the communications room. And you are listening to Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast in the world today for loan officers. Pretty freaking awesome to be able to say that and be uh, and be accurate, Mike. So uh, we're, we're, we're I'm just saying we're pretty proud of that. You know, we're pretty proud of that. So it's, it's awesome, man. I'm honored to be here with you, Carl. So there's some other great podcasts. You know, there are some other great ones, but they're not as great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're, almost all of them are very dear friends of mine. So, uh, so we, I, they know I, I was going to call a couple of them out, but that, that'd probably be uncool. Uh, but there are, there's some great podcasts. And, Absolutely. Uh, I'm, Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a podcast fanatic myself. So, uh, all right. So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, a little bit of a um, of a controversial topic. So you're listening to the right episode if you want to hear about how we pay some of our people, uh, both our loan partners and our processors, and how many files do they do, and um, you know, bips, bonuses, all these questions. Because we saw uh, a, a feed coming in on one of the um, group pages we have, which is the loan officer deal desk. Uh, which if you're not a member of the Loan Officer Deal Desk, it's free. It's a free group. Just go on Facebook and look for uh, Loan Officer Deal Desk. And it's a great, great, great group of people uh, that are uh, sharing how to do difficult deals or, hey, am I allowed to do this? And you don't want to take the time to, you know, look up all the regulations and does somebody else have an experience or something like that? Just a phenomenal group of people. We got underwriters in their process, a great group of people. But anyway, so um, before I start, I always like to, re well, dude, I, Mike, tell people who you are, man. I'm Mike Kardasha. I work here with Carl. I'm kind of known as the, the marketing ninja, scripting guru. So I, I spend a lot of time working with our members, our own LOs, uh, people that follow us on the podcast and helping them primarily with their marketing and the operational side of the business. And rumor has it, you've taught me almost everything that I know. <laughs> that, that's, that's what they say. That's what they that, say. Yeah, that's, that's what I say. That's what I yeah, say. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So uh, real quick, uh, uh, we want to thank everybody for the, uh, the five-star reviews. Uh, so many five-star reviews that you've been giving us. I always like to start an episode with reading one. And uh, we got one right here. This was uh, Alexander Ryan Bailey. Thank you so much for the great uh, feedback. Ryan uh, gave us a five-star review. He said, so many golden nuggets here in the podcast that uh, help increase your sales, confidence, relationship building, and of course, commission. Uh, thanks for all your, uh, thanks for all the information. So uh, Alexander, thank you. I appreciate uh, your five-star review. And those of you that's watching this live as we're recording this, uh, we, we, we're, we're broadcast live on Facebook. I bet Mike's going to say, Carl, what is that in your hand? Isn't that what you're going to say, Mike? I was, what I was thinking, man, what is that? that this is a, uh, one of our little Yeti type mugs. It's a mortgage marketing animal uh, Yeti type mug. And you put something in hot and it stays hot. You put something in cold, it stays cold and it's spill proof. And uh, we actually, this is no, no kidding. I actually did a test. I put some uh, ice cubes, the same amount of ice cubes in a glass of water and ours actually kept it colder than the Yeti cup for longer. How about that? So anyway, that. so then I bet you're dying to ask Mike, say, Carl, how would I get one of those? Yeah, Carl, how would I get one of those, man? How I'm leaving I? us an honest review. Here's what you do is leave us an honest review. Of course, we like the five stars, but just leave us an honest review uh, and then take a snapshot of that review and then email it to us at support at the marketing animals.com support at the marketing animals.com. And, uh, and, and we'll send you one. Right. So, uh, so awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you happened to ask that Mike. Great question. Yeah. Man. I'm going to go ahead and do it right after. Uh, you know, I think I am too. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've, dude, I, I, well, I, they, they were kind enough to send me one. So uh, anyway, we're happy to send these. People. All right, let's get right into the episode. So this is very controversial. It's dicey. because, yeah. Cause first of all, I, I just want to let you know that, um, so this podcast is, so I'm a branch manager. And so this is a podcast, you know, kind of like buy loan officers for loan officers, you know, buy branch managers for branch managers, buy, let's say buy mortgage, you know, sales professional CEOs for sales CEOs. Mm -hmm. In saying that, I know that we have a lot of our listeners are uh, processors and loan partners, and we love each and every one and we appreciate it. But I am focusing today's message to the loan officer as, as I always do. Uh, Cause that's who the, you have to pick who you're targeting and that's who I picked I'm targeting. And, and some of our best members uh, have, uh, have gotten the podcast being shared from 
their loan partner, their process, I heard it say, man, pretty good stuff. You, you might you know, use this. So, so I, I cannot say enough love that we have for our, our processors, our loan partners, and our assistants. Um, but I'm going to just, you know, people listen to this because uh, it became number one because we tell it like it is. And so I'm going to tell it like it is. So that's my, my little disclaimer. So we love our help. We, without processors and loan partners would have no business, right? It'd, it'd be that's right. Like I, like my my umbrella. I think we closed somewhere around six hundred loans last month, or seven hundred. It's some mm-hmm. huge number. It's a record, you know. So it's six seven hundred for the month is what our umbrella uh, closed uh, last month, uh, which is just ginormous. We'd have closed zero without our amazing processors and loan partners. So I just want to just want to say that. All right. So. Where this all came up, Mike, is we had somebody post on uh, groups, and we see this question come up a lot mm-hmm. uh, on some of the different groups. It was like, how do I pay my processors and loan partners? And if you're not sure what a loan partner is, I've heard different terms for this loan officer assistant, production partner. Basically, it's an assistant that helps you with the loan. So that's, this wouldn't be the person answering your phone necessarily or maybe helping you with your mailers or maybe helping you with your social media. This is a person that helps you on the loans right? Maybe they chase conditions, uh, 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 help keep in contact with everybody, update people right. as your volume increases. Uh, so how do, we, how do we pay those people? Because they're, they are definitely a critical part of our growth. You know, one thing that we've seen, Mike, is if you don't have, a, if you don't have an assistant, you're the assistant, you're not going to grow. Absolutely. It's never happened. Right. right. You need happened. a team. You need a team. Absolutely. You have to have a team. And people say, uh, when we've got episodes of that. When do I get a team? Uh, day one. Right. Just, I, I'm just a firm believer in that. You go, well, wait, well, I don't have enough production to support it. Well, that's because you don't have one. And it's the old jump off the cliff and grow the wings on the way down. You get somebody, part of my motivation to come to work every day and putting on my war paint and, and, and giving it everything I got. Frankly, Mike, just being honest, I walk in the office, dude, I see you and Diane and Melissa and Meg and, uh, Nina and I don't know if it's some Erica, you know, I, I walk in an office, I see everybody, Cammy, I walk in the office, see every Scotty, I walk, I, right. I see it. And I think, man, man, these people are counting on me, right? I really got to step up to the plate. And that's a huge motivation uh, for me that if I feel like slacking off, I go, I can't because not that I don't take time off because I do, I take scheduled time off. Right. But when I'm in the office, man, I'm on my game because I have to be, right? You're counting on me too, you know, and I'm counting on you. We count on each likewise, other. Likewise, yeah. brother. Absolutely. It's like an accountability partner, you know? Yep. yep. So, um, all right. So, so on, on, on paying these people, I have found by far the best results. And I've been doing this for 20 some years, been a top producer really since year one. I think year one, I don't remember exactly, but I averaged roughly about, I don't know. It, it took me, if I remember right, it took me like 90 days to get to 10 loans a month. Wow. Yeah, it, it happened wow. fast. And uh, thanks, thanks to Ralph Watkins. He's the one, you know, we, we, we've had him on here. He's one of our partners too. Amazing, amazing yeah, he, guy. He, he, yeah. he showed me a game. If you've never spoken <laughs> to Ralph, by the way, um, that would be a very good thing to do because Ralph's the one that mapped me out a plan that literally, and, and I'm not exaggerating, I think literally at 90 days, I was like, like at 10 loans a month. It was incredible. So if you've never done that, just real quick, if you go to loanofficerstrategycall.com, loanofficerstrategycall.com, uh, you can speak to the same guy that I did when I didn't know my butt from the hole in the ground, didn't know mortgage had a T in it. Um, that was the best conversation I've ever had in my life. And, uh, and it, it doesn't cost you a dime. So uh, if you haven't ever done that, uh, go do that. Or I've heard a lot of people just quickly. I've heard a lot of people say that about about the call with Ralph. And uh, you, you mentioned a second ago, be a good use of time. It'd probably be their best use of time if they oh, could. Oh, dude, it's it's yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's phenomenal. And and same thing with you, Mike. I'm not not taking away. You know, you're just <laughs> you're you're an amazing guy when it comes to scripting and whatnot. You're absolutely amazing. So between you and Ralph, I mean, it's just it's 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 an incredible resource. And and it doesn't cost anything. Yep. So anyway, absolutely. So. Um, so I found out very rapidly as I was uh, growing things that I had to have a team. Mm-hmm. So how you want to pay these people is a straight salary, a good salary, a very fair salary. I, one thing I have found, if I pay even just an extra 10% more than everybody else or than, than most uh, other people, 
a little extra will get you a lot extra of a person. We were just talking about this yesterday on our, on our team meeting. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that one thing I've learned is uh, skimping on help uh, is not a good thing to do. Like that is A players hire A players, B players hire C players. You know, Absolutely. Just, and Carl, when you say uh, pay them a, a straight salary, Art, what about the idea of like a per file bonus or basis points? What, what would you say to the person thinking about that? I would say while your heart, you're, you're probably making that decision from your heart, not your head. It is a horrible decision. It why is, is an that? absolute atrocious decision to do that. I'll tell you why. So like, uh, here, I'll give you an example. So uh, we had a guy in our group that uh, it was him and two loan partners. Mm -hmm. And, and, so, and I'm, I'm telling this story from memory. I don't have notes on this. So it's mm -hmm. just the best of my, the best that I remember it. So, uh, so the guy came into the freedom club and I don't remember how many loans he was closing. It was, and again, this is just off my memory. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't know, like five, six, seven, okay. know, something like that. Okay. And, uh, and he had two people helping him. Yeah. Uh, and he was paying them, if I remember right, like around 45,000, right? Give or take. Mm -hmm. And this was in uh, a small town where 45,000 was, uh, was, was uh, okay, right? It, 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 was, it was an okay salary in this small town. Well, once we started working together very rapidly, he went up to, he drastically increased his business. You know, he went from, and again, just from my memory, somewhere around five, six, seven loans a month to like 20 or 30 loans a month. Okay. You know, very, very short order, like within right. a year, if I, the way I remember it. Okay. Well, now, so these, these loan partners, these assistants that he hired were getting bips on his production. Mm. And when they started off, they were making like, I think their base was like 45 and then they were up to like, 55 or something like that with their bonuses. Right. Well, once we quintupled his business yeah. in a very yeah. short period, these loan partners now went from making like 45, 50, 55,000. If I remember right, they were each making 130 now. Oof. And, 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 and which, which, you know, you, 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 at first you think, well, wait a minute, they helped him grow. Shouldn't that be okay? But one thing to keep in mind is, you have to pay a position what that position pays. You have to be a good steward of, of the business. And, you know, if, 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 like, if, 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 like, like, like the person that makes, and I'm not comparing the two, but it's just what popped in my head. So the person that makes French fries at McDonald's, mm -hmm. um, which by the way is the number one profit center uh, for McDonald's is, is French, they make more profit on French fries than any other wow. single piece That's of food. That's interesting. Yeah. And so that guy or that lady is most valuable or part of the most value, most profitable part of it. I don't care how many French fries they're selling. The French fry guy gets paid, I don't know, $10 an hour, whatever it is, eight, 10, 12, 15, wherever you are. Right. That's what it pays. And you go, wait a minute. I sold $2 million worth of French fries last year and it was a profit of 1.8 million. You still get 10, 11, $12 because that's what that position pays. And so a processor or a loan partner a non-salesperson, that's what the position pays. And, uh, and it, 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 like I had a processor one time come up to me, one of my processors, I want to make more money. And I said, well, awesome. You have to do a different job, you know, which is okay. You know, I, I, not go to a different job. You have to do a different job here. And, uh, and, and I've had one instance of that where that's happened. And, and I'm not going to divulge her what she makes, but one of them makes a, a lot more money now, like a lot, lot more and, and, and well deservedly. It used to be one of my processors now has changed the, where she's at in the company and makes a lot, lot more than processors do a whole lot more. Um, and so if it, so, so even though these people helped us grow drastically, we can give raises, but like, 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 like the friend I was just talking about that lived in this small town where he had these two assistants that went from uh, $40,000, $50,000 a year to now 125000 in like a nine-month period. Mm -hmm. The problem with doing that is as the business owner, as the loan officer, mm -hmm. uh, as the person in charge, it's your job, Mike, it's my job to make sure that the business is rock solid and that I've got reserves when things happen. When 08 happened, I've got, you know, the, the, the housing crash, those who've been doing this for a while, I had reserves. I stayed in business. Uh, when this COVID uh, virus just came through, right, as we're recording this, uh, we're, we're on the back half of that. 
But when that came through, a lot of people were in some serious trouble. Right. And so the first thing I did when, when they announced the shutdown, first thing I did, and I can't remember if I walked over the office or if we did it on a Zoom meeting. I think I walked over the office the way I remember it. I walked out of the office and told everybody, your job is secure. I've been a good steward. I've saved money. I've got reserves. I've got literally one year of everybody's salary in a special account. And I literally do. So that if something drastic happens, uh, the, the people that help me to get w- to where I am, been a huge part to help me to get to where I am. I got their back. I'm going to take care of them. They're not going to get laid off here, at least not for a year, like a solid year. And I've got that into a special bank account. And the reason I did that was because in 08, uh, man, that was painful. It was hard. It was real hard. And I remember going through 08 going, man, I wish I had saved some more money. Right. Man, it was close. It was close. I mean, like I'm thinking of my, my dearest Diane, you know, she's one of my partners now, a very integral part of the company. And I remember, I remember coming into the office uh, some weeks uh, in 08 thinking, gosh, I hope I can make payroll, you know, because Diane take a bullet for me, you know, right. not, not in the chest, but like an arm or a leg, <laughs> you know, she'd take a bullet for me and, and I'd take one for her, you know, and, 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 and maybe the chest literally, like literally. And uh, so, so, because of our position, we have to be a good steward of our money and have reserves set up. So if things happen, you know, two weeks into this, when I got, gosh, I can't make payrolls, guys, you, you, you got to, you, you have to leave. You got, you got, I got to lay everybody off. Not my fault. I didn't cause a pandemic, right? I, I wish I didn't, but because I wasn't a good steward, I don't have reserves. So we have to have reserves. The other reason that you don't want to pay BIPs, number one, their mm-hmm. salaries can get out of hand. Like my, my, again, my friend in Texas, uh, when his loan partners were getting paid uh, 125 or 130 and they started at 50, like nine months earlier, um, he had to go and decrease their pay, you know, take away oh. their bips, take away their bips. And that, and, that's, that's a tough conversation to have, well, right? Well, it to is, make but, a, but listen, to make Mike, a... you think it's tough. You think it's tough at 125 from, from that point, uh, if they would have stayed on the same bips by the next year. Oh. For the next 12 months, they wouldn't be at 125 because I remember watching his numbers growing up as we, we were working together. After we mapped out a plan, we started working together in the Freedom Club. You know, the, the next year, they would have been getting paid like 275 each because he was making over a million dollars. Wow. Right? As, as the loan officer has a W-2 income because his volume went drastically up using the strategies that you and I mapped out. And, and, uh, and so now these loan partners would be making like 200, two, two and a quarter each. And, and you just, it's not prudent. It's, what I'm pay. hearing from you is it's not, like everything that we teach from the marketing standpoint, from the operational standpoint that we teach here at, at the Marketing Animals, it's scalable. And what I'm hearing from you is compensating an assistant or a processor based off of basis points is not scalable in the long term. Brother, that's exactly what it is. That's ex- I, I, we could have said that and that would have been a 30 second clip <laughs> instead, of, uh, instead of the last 20. But that, that's exactly what it is because – you, you have to be careful because like, like I remember it, like in the beginning, like when, and I remember get, first getting started, right? I a very clear memory of mine. And I remember some of the things that I might have agreed with uh, when I was closing uh, four loans a month uh, would, made sense then. I thought, man, I'm saving so much money because I don't have to pay them this high salary. And if I don't make any money, they don't, you know, I don't have to pay out. It's a wrong way to think of things. And it's, it's the small way to think of things. Let me say it that way. It's just, and I, and I, originally I thought that way, you know, it's a small way to think of things. And I, uh, while it made sense at four loans a month, plug in what happens when you hit 40 loans a month? Does it make sense then? And, and a lot of people, you know, I've heard people say, well, Carl, that'd be a good problem to have. You know, uh, what do I pay when I'm closing 40 loans a month (laughs) until you're closing 40 loans a month. And then it's not a good problem to have. Right. Or even, even going from four loans to 20 loans a month, which we've seen happen over and over and over and over and over again when somebody plugs in. Um, it's my belief that anybody closing four loans a month, do as we instruct them to, will get to, it's my firm belief, they will get to 20 if they actually do it. And, and, and many do. And then they come up to me. It, it's, it's, it's probably one of the number one problems, Carl. I, I start off paying BIPs. What do I do now? You know, I just, I'm not going to mention any names. You, you probably know who I'm talking about, but in our Freedom Club group, I literally just a week ago saw somebody comment to, to our mastermind and say, hey guys, I, I uh, want some advice to see what you would do in terms of compensation. I uh, have a uh, LP, a loan partner that has a small base salary and gets basis points for closed loans. 
And that made sense at two million a month, but now he's at six to seven million a month. And he's like, it's a lot. How do I have that conversation? We see this every single day when you plug in and you follow the daily success plan, you, you market to your database, referral partners, you increase your referrals, you get busier. You have to think about what's going to happen when you do triple, quadruple or, or more your business there. It has to be scalable. Yeah. And we've seen many people at like literally 10 X. And mm -hmm. you just, you think, you don't think about that when you first start, you go, well, that, that, that happened to Bob or that happened to Sue or that happened to Jen. I'm thinking my friend, Jen Conley, or, or, or that happened to Corey Kavanuski or, or, right. you know, you, you hear about all those things, but dude, it, it happens. Like, so don't you, you know, don't go into this thinking, well, I'm going to stay small. Cause if you're paying percentages, you're, you're, you're not meaning to, but you're thinking small and what, but it, it gets worse than that. So the other point about hiring a uh, paying somebody on BIP. So let's say I've got a loan partner or a processor okay. and let's say, let's say I'm, I'm paying them. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to grab an easy mathematical number, 10 BIPs, right? Okay. Easy. So I'm giving them 10 BIPs, 10 basis points, and we're closing uh, 10 loans a month now. And now we're closing 20. Mm -hmm. My loan partner is going to need help at 20, way, way before 20 actually. And, and that, that's probably another episode, but way before 20, my loan partner is going to need help. So now here we are at say at, at 15, 16 and my loan partner is starting to, some of the things are starting to come back onto my plate. Right. Because that loan partner is getting busy, not their fault. Right. Right. That, 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 that things are coming back onto my plate. Now I'm not doing that activity to bring those loans in in the first place. Cause I'm back into the files again. I'm mm. losing money that way. So then I go, okay, I need to go hire another loan partner. So here I got this loan partner that's closing 15 loans, getting 10 basis points. And I go hire, let's say it's Bob. And then I go hire Susan, right, to be my second loan partner. Then I go, all right, Bob, you know those 15 files? I'm going to give seven of them to Susan. Bob goes, wait a minute. What about, what about my 10 basis points on those files? Oh, yeah. But Bob, because you've been so awesome, you've helped me grow. I'm now going to cut your, your bips oh. because I got to pay them to Susan now. And Carl, do you feel like, I mean, personally, I'm just thinking from the processor or loan partner's perspective in this example, let's say in this example, I'm your loan partner, right? And you're offering me 10 basis points per, per deal that we close. Do you, uh, would you agree with me that, that that may encourage me actually to bite off more than I can chew? I mean, if you're going to pay me uh, 10 basis points, brother, if I can only handle 20, let's just say, or 15, whatever that number is, I may be motivated to try to handle another five or 10 that honestly, I, I, it's too much for me because you are compensating me rightfully. So I'm going to take all that I can get. Right. Absolutely. Especially, uh, especially like, let's just say, I know you're a, uh, eligible bachelor here, uh, Mike, as we're talking mm -hmm. today, uh, the, the best that I know, I, I, I might, I might've just That's gotten right. in trouble. All right. But, uh, <laughs> but let's say, let's say the lovely Mrs. Mike, mm -hmm. uh, just got laid off. Mm -hmm. And, and you go, wow, I got these two car payments. I got a mortgage and I got 3.2 kids and, and, and it's part of my family income. So now I'm motivated to take on more than I can handle. Absolutely. Uh, because of, of pressures at home. And uh, so, so that's a problem. So, so like when you hire the second one, number one, Bob, the first one is now going to get a cut in his pay, mm -hmm. his or her pay, right? And then what, but that causes another problem. So now, so now I introduce Bob to Susan, who is now loan partner number two. Is Bob going to help Susan make it here and learn how we're doing things around here? Or is Bob going to kind of hope Susan doesn't make it? Maybe, maybe inadvertently put a stick in her spokes, hoping that she falls off the bike. Because uh, if she doesn't make it, he gets a raise. Yeah. And unfortunately, we, I think we see that far too often. And I think this is a great time, I, Carl, if you want to go just quickly into the difference between this is, the, by the way, Carl, this is the number one lesson I think I've ever learned from you personally. I have to thank you for this. And I, I'd want you to share what is the difference between ROI and COI? Because I think that's what we're talking about here, right? Is the difference between return on investment and the yeah, cost so, of action. So uh, everybody, everybody always focuses like, what's the ROI, which is like you said, just said return on investment. And everybody, think that's where it's all at. Everything's got to have a positive ROI. And, and that's important. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's not where the most of it is. Where, where the money's really lost in this game, and probably every business, I think, is the COI, which is the cost of inactivity, uh, which uh, would really be the, the lack of hiring a loan partner in the first place, or, or 
not having enough loan partners or not having enough processors so that I'm getting pulled back into the file. And now my cost of inactivity of going out and getting new loans, you think getting help is expensive? Not getting help is absolutely astronomical cost to any business. The cost of inactivity is absolutely poison to your business. That's like, um, so picture, imagine Carl and I are, are, are great salesmen, right? Just imagine for a second, Carl and I are great salesmen and we work, no, no secret, Carl and I love Jeeps, right? Both of us own Jeeps, we love Jeeps. So imagine we work at a full service Jeep dealership, right? And uh, the guys in the back that do the maintenance are too busy doing oil changes and checkups. So they're calling Carl and I, the salesman, in the back to work on the oil, right? And we, now we can't sell, we can't follow up, we can't prospect, we can't market. We're not doing the money-making activities that even brought in the clients because we're bogged down by doing the work, the fulfillment, the operational side. And I think that's where the cost of inaction comes into play that affects our three levels of freedom as well as theirs, right? In terms of the freedom of financial freedom, the money-making activities, yeah. time. We spend more time in our business now and stress. We get more stress. And I think that's the cost of not getting the help that we need. And, you know, you talk about stress, uh, and Mike, your mic moved down just a hair bit. So, uh, uh, no, just, you're not as loud as you once were. Oh, so you okay. might need to readjust. There you go. So, um, so, you know, talking about stress, the other thing, like when we, when we're paying our people bips and they're motivated to take on more than they can chew, mm -hmm. now they get stressed out because they take on more than they can chew. And when they take on more than they chew, they get stressed out. They get burned out. Uh, and I tell you what, one thing I've always, uh, man, I will not be a part of somebody in my office working 24 seven, like I used to do early in my career, you know, and I, and just on a personal note, I know, you know, this, Mike, I don't know if I've ever said this on the air, but my daddy used to work all the time. My father, he's a good man. He's a good man. Worked all the time. Like it, often his schedule, this is no exaggeration was literally, uh, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, literally. And, and it affected me still, still to this day. And, uh, and I remember thinking, I will not be a part of, of, uh, of, 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 of condoning that activity in my world, right? In my office. And uh, so my loan partners and processors, I'm not going to tell you nobody ever stays over, uh, you know, over, uh, over five o'clock or, you know, uh, during the, during the record months, uh, we just came from, I'm not gonna tell you somebody, they never logged in on a Saturday, mm -hmm. but, uh, if they're doing that, it means that we need to hire more people, which actually we're, we're doing that right now. We are hiring some loan partners and right. we're running ads even as we speak. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, so you cannot burn out your team. I saw somebody the other, <laughs> I, saw, I gotta be careful cause they, they might be a listener. And, and I mean, it was a great question that they asked and I love the questions. Somebody said, hey, my processor's doing like 100 files. Uh, how do I get my loan officers to help that person out uh, without taking away from them, them from sales? It's like, dude, you got to be kidding me. You know, you, you hire another processor. You don't yep. get your loan partners. Or your, you don't get your loan officers to help your process. So you hire processor, help loan officers. So they get out in the field and sell. And if you got some, I don't know if that was a real question or, or they were just being facetious. But uh, I mean, for me, I see people bragging about how many deals their processor can do. That is a huge mistake because there's no way if my processor is closing, let's say 15 files a month mm -hmm. and yours, Mike is closing or uh, working on uh, 40 files a month, right? Which one's going to give our borrowers a better service? One that's doing 15. Yeah. Which one is going to, is going to be, have time and bandwidth that when they're talking with the borrower, the co-bar, the listing agent, the buying agent, the title company, which one is going to read that script that we have of, of, of that they actually bring in more business for it? Which one is going to be motivated to help us bring in even more business? The one that's, that's doing less, right? If they're doing 15, they're going to have more time to be able to follow the plan, ask for business. And quite frankly, they're probably going to have a better disposition, a better attitude. They're going to be happier in what yep. they're doing. And, and that affects what we do in business when we're, when we're people facing, right? Dude, our, our loan partners and processors by far talk to our, our, our customers way more than the loan officer does, right? And that's the way it should be because the loan they officer should, yeah. is, is, out there getting, is out there getting new business. Right. And uh, yeah, you, you do not want to run your, I've always thought I want to run my team at about 80%. Now, if that's not always the case, Mike, sometimes it's 70% and frankly, sometimes it's 110%. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, about 80% capacity is kind of like where I like to, like to keep everybody because everybody stays happy. 
Um, uh, we don't pay them bips. We pay them a very fair salary, very fair, very fair salary. What would you and, consider that to be? I mean, hey, we're all in different places, different markets. I mean, what, can you give us a range? I'm sure there's a lot of people that are curious as to like a range or, or – You know, the range is so varied depending upon where you are, Mike. I'm going okay. I'm I'm to stay off of that one just for now. Okay. I'm going to okay. stay off of that one just for now. It's a great question. It is a big range, um, yeah. You, you know, the, the other thing – I'll tell you something else too. And, and again, this is – man, I, I, this is going to be a little contra bit controversial too. The other thing I have found – is just paying like we think yeah but what's going to motivate them to do a good job and my response is uh, the ability to come to work tomorrow right because if you don't do a good job you can't come in tomorrow right, right? that's just how this works and and one thing that i found is while salespeople like like you and i are mike mm -hmm. uh we are majorly motivated by commission checks that's how we get paid right, right. That's, that's how we get paid it's how you get paid it's how i get paid so we're majorly motivated, which is why we're in sales. Right. What we have to understand is God made, in my belief system, God made people different. Thank God. You know, thank, thank goodness. Absolutely. Uh, people made different and not everybody is motivated by how much more money they're making. Uh, most people, about 75%, if you look at disc, disc profiles, about 75% are motivated not by money, but by stability. And which is, goes back to give them a, a very fair salary and let them know that you're in a strong position financially so that you're going to be there tomorrow and the next week and next month and the next year and the next year, right? Because giving the stability is going to attract more great help than a higher wage every single time. Now, now that's when we're hiring loan officers, whole different conversation. On the loan officer, it is about right. Patient. Right, right. It is about commission, and they loan officers create their own stability, right? Or the 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 outside loan officers, you know, create their own stability, but the the loan partners and processors are counting on their salespeople for and the and the, and the company owner or the branch manager for their stability. And if you focus on the stability, that'll mean more to them than 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 giving bits. So so if you're already so it so and I'm just going to use some arbitrary numbers as easy math. It, let's say you're paying fifty thousand and ten basis points. Okay. What I would do is I would go have a conversation with them. I would bring it up to maybe 60 and take away the BIPs. So as you take away the BIPs, bump up the salary a little bit, you know, to compensate for it and let them know whether we have up months or down months, you're going to be, you're, you're going to get your pay. And uh, that gives some more certainty as well. You know, in, does, in that type look, of role, they, they want the certainty. It, 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 it uh, is. Most and, of the time. And, uh, and uh, you know, our, the main, like when, when we're out recruiting uh, loan officer assistants and uh, our, you know, when we're looking to hire loan officer assistants and processors, our number one carrot, like our base, the basic ad that we send out is, hey, you tired of working on 500 files? You, you, you want to you be able to take the weekends and evenings off? Come, come work over here. We're, we're chill over here. We're cool. And, and, and that attracts, that carrot attracts more of them than any other one thing yep. is, hey, you burned out where you are come over here and, and, and have a little bit of fresh air, have a little it, time off, enjoy the evenings and weekends with your family. That's our number one thing. It's funny that you say that because really I think a lot of what you're saying boils down to the same reason why loan officers transition. In my experience so far, 90% of the time when a loan officer is considering transitioning to a new company, it's not because they're happy where they're currently at and think that there's a great future and opportunity there. 90% of the time it's really because there's a, an issue with operations, typically stemming from the loan partner or processor, and they're looking for a home that can support them and being able to ramp up their business more and, and have more opportunity to sell more with less stress. So, I mean, for the same reason you're talking about recruiting uh, the processors, giving them a better quality of life, it's the exact same reason that, that loan officers are, are deciding to jump ship companies they've been with 10, 15 years even to have more opportunity as well. The same note. No, no question about it. So, uh... Well, I, th I see where I, I could talk about this subject like for hours because it's, it's one of my yeah. favorite subjects, you know, yeah. just, you know, it's, it's operating as a business and, and, uh, and not a job. And uh, so I, so I think our bullet points is what makes sense at four loans might not make sense at 20. What makes sense at 20 might not make sense at 40. What makes sense at 40 might not make sense at 80. And we have loan officers in our group literally closing that, that kind of loans. I mean, just, 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 mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, um, high, 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 uh, 
a, a personal production, not, not just their branch, right. their own personal production, like super high, you know, 40, 50, 60 loans. We, we see that, right? We see that. And, and, and so don't position yourself up. Yeah, but I'm not doing that. I'm only doing four. So number one, think, what is this going to look like? Uh, what can this look like? And make sure that I start off making it looking that way. Uh, number two, it disincentivizes them to help you grow because then you're going to hire a second one and they lose some of the bips and you can't afford to pay two people on all the production because then your pay starts to go down mm -hmm. and, and which leads to number three, uh, you got to be a good steward of your money and all this stuff. You got to, oh, yeah. you got to be a good steward. You got to have stability in your company so that when things go awry, dude, there was zero sweat on my forehead financially. I, I cared about our country. Don't get me wrong, but about, you know, Carl's personal income or Carl's personal reserves or, or my ability to keep the office open, zero, zero, con like literally 0.0, .0 concern with that. Cause I did my homework. So you want to make sure you're that uh, number four, you don't want to encourage somebody to bite off more than chew because their service won't run as well. Mm -hmm. Number five, if they got more files that they're doing, they're not going to be asking for the business using the scripts that we have on your behalf, that your, your loan partners and processors should actually make their own salary by asking for more business. That's part of the job at, 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 our, at our organization. Part of their job is to do that because they just read a script. At the end of each call, they read a simple script and we get more loans that way. So they're actually the loan partners and processors are free. People say, well, what does it cost? They're, they're nothing because they bring in new business because they have time and they have the bandwidth to do it. Uh, and and, and number, number six, if you're looking to hire somebody, use that as part of your carrot. It's what we do. Yep. Hey, you're tired of working, you're, you're tired of uh, trying to close 30, 40 files a month. Uh, come over here to the, uh, to the other side and, and let me show you what we, do, what we do over here. We'll treat you with love, respect, pay you very where, well, pay you very fairly. Uh, but at, at five o'clock, you're going home. On the weekends, you're, you're, you're staying home. Again, it doesn't happen that every weekend and every evening, you know, but, but the vast majority, like the plan, that's the plan. And uh, Beautiful plan. That's kind of that's 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 what I got today, man. Did, did, did we miss anything, Mike? Yeah, you know, like you said, we could talk about this for hours, but I, I think that was a, a chunk full of great information, man. I think we really covered it well. All right, I, pre I appreciate you, brother. Hey, uh, if you're if you're if, if you're interested, or, or those of you that are interested in like like what do we pay? I'll tell you, but, but well, let's get on the horn. Let's get on the yeah. phone where we can talk a little bit more. I just I, just, I, I thought this was an important topic, but I wanted to be respectful uh, of everybody. I agree. And, uh, so if you want to talk about salary ranges. Or uh, you know, um, like uh, or, or anything like mapping out a plan, or how do I, how how do how do I go from four loans to twenty loans? How do I go from twenty to eighty? How do I uh, recruit or 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 bring on new new assistants or, or 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 loan officers? How do we do all that? If you just go to loanofficerstrategycall.com, loanofficerstrategycall.com. Uh, myself and Mike or Ralph would love to have that conversation with you, and, and we'll. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll show you what we're doing and we'll, we'll, uh, you know, you, this might be something you want some help with ongoing, or it might, you might just want to make the one phone call, get the information either way. It's totally cool. It's not a sales call. It's totally cool. So, um, all right. I think we covered it, man. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks for having me on today, Carl. Appreciate Dude, it's, it. Uh, it's, uh, you're, you're just a real sharp guy, man. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's a few people, uh, that I really have super high respect for. And, uh, you definitely fall on that list, my man. So you're just an awesome, awesome guy. And, uh, Mike, the day uh, you and I met was a very good day for Carl. I can tell you that. Likewise, my friend. Likewise. All right, everybody. So, uh, thanks so much for listening to the, uh, the podcast, uh, again, loan officer strategy Uh, man, do not let the cost of inactivity keep you from making that phone call. It'll, I promise you, it'll be a, if, if you, you get on that call and we have a, we have a conversation and map out your plan for you and, and talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you think that was a bad use of your time, uh, your decision, my mind, you let me know and I'll personally send you a $200 check uh, just for, uh, you know, if you think it's a waste of time, I'll write you a check and you're the one that decides if it was a waste of time or not, not, not me. No, no asterisks. I'll, I'll just put that out there. So I, awesome. I, I love doing these calls. It's, it's one of my favorite things. So, uh, so cool. All right. Um, I think that's it. Appreciate those five-star reviews. Hey, if, um, uh, and remember we give up our little, uh, fancy dancy, uh, little, uh, uh, mortgage marketing animals, Yeti, uh, type, uh, 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 mugs for free, just for leaving any review. That's honest. Just take a picture support at the marketing If you think this uh, episode would help some other people, maybe send it to your branch manager, 
uh, maybe send it to your loan officers. Uh, we appreciate uh, you guys sharing it. Uh, it's the number one the way that we grow the uh, podcast. So, uh, all right. I think that's it. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. I know this episode went a little long here, but it was great information and we got more information for you. Talk to me when you call in. See you on the next episode, Mike. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.